Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be discussing the protests, the safety and security concerns for protesters, and the IGP has issued guidelines. The Inspector General of Police, Olukayo de Egbetoko, has outlined conditions for the August 1 nationwide protest in Nigeria. He says protesters must provide details on their proposed route, assembly points, duration, and contacts of leaders and organizers. The guidelines aim to help the police deploy adequate personnel, ensure public safety, and avoid conflicts with other events. The police seek to minimize risk of violence, property damage, and criminal activities. Egberto Kumre emphasized the need for cooperation with the police and adherence to legal and global best practices for peaceful assembly. He warned against potential violent element and foreign interference, urging caution and consideration before joining protests. The police have been monitoring threats and expressed concern about the protests as potentially being exploited for criminal purposes. Joining us to talk about all of this is Samson Ajibade. He's a security expert and is joining us on the phone. Good morning, Samson. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so the protest that is scheduled to happen on the 1st of August, you know, has been an outcry of many Nigerians talking about the hunger in the land, talking about insecurity, and so many things that are just not going right in Nigeria. Before we begin and we talk about the guidelines, as a true Nigerian yourself, what do you think, um, what do you think about the current state of Nigeria and why this protest should happen or should not happen? Too much is a right. In fact, it is a fundamental right according to Section. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Please go ahead. According to Section 40, we have the right to, to assembly. It is a form that's just given by, by. It is just part of us. No, I think another thing what would be you that maybe could have even said all the deadlines and everything he has given. Maybe it was also ask uh, protesters to start registering the name of their sources because with the guidelines and everything, we could use this. Nigerian people have the right to protest, and we do not need to notify the government. You do not need to notify the police before you protest. That is a right you have. Even the public order act stipulates that you sign offenses. The thing is, the constitution, the provisions of the constitution supersede all of those acts. And it gives us the right to protest without notifying the police. So with with all with the guidelines and everything, but I I say that all the guidelines they are just administrative uh, approaches. They have the administrative means just to ensure there is uh, peaceful process so that so I know they are bad and all like that. The IGP should also note that with all the guidelines, with all the guidelines. It means if anything happens to, to the protesters, we will be liable because he gave all the guidelines and a lot of them are ready to be followed with. But Nigerians are not, are not obligated to register their name with the police before the protest. And can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please go ahead. Okay, now let's break down like this. Am I required to notify? Am I required by law to notify the police before conducting a protest? The answer is no. Do I need to obtain a permit? No. Mm. Can I damage properties or cause harm to the opposition during a protest or rally? No. As long as the protest is peaceful. And almost all protests are, are peaceful. Until some elements, probably political elements or other elements, come in. So that is it. Mm. Well, but nothing mandates to obtain permits, 
to obtain permission to tell the people because it is a fundamental right. Mm. Thank you. All right. So I, I know that one of the issues um, that they have raised is hijacking the protests. And, you know, we've seen things like that happen in the past. For instance, the NSAS protest started peacefully. And after a few days, it was being hijacked by some criminals. And we know how that went. So for this now, with the IGP of police having these guidelines, of course, is to ensure that there's no destruction of properties, there is no loss of lives. Um, and that's the reason why. But what are some potential challenges do you think that this protest could actually, you know, propose? Okay, I, the potential challenge is the police on their side have been to look from the old SARS experience. When it comes to crowd management and crowd control, situational analysis, I think this system was deficient then. Mm. especially managing the NSAS, the NSAS protest. So after that, I am very sure that the police, they've learned another law enforcers, they've learned a lot from that. So that is, that is the reason they are coming up with all of those things to mitigate and to reduce some of uh, the, viol the violence level and the, cha the challenges that may come up. Let me also use this approach. I've always emphasized that there is a class of people a class that determines the fate of the nation through machinery set aside to formulate, to implement, to legislate, and adjudicate over matters. Matters that determine the action and inaction and the fate of the people. They agree over many things and split over minor issues. When they agree, they care less about the masses. And when they disagree, recruit the masses to their side. In fact, they now begin to yell and advocate for the masses left for years. The gullible masses shower accolades on them, thinking they now have a messiah. When they settle their rape with their former allies, the supporting masses continue with sexism and later feel used, like they stay in local balance, used and dumped. Do not that in their world. Some of the challenges. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Some of the challenges. Oppositions would do things that are readily available to carry out criminal acts. Who are these guys that are readily available? The vagrants, the hooligans, who live under the bridge, who have no place, who have no means of survival, and every day as they wake, the only thing they just want to do is to probably pick pockets, engage in, in, in petty crime, and so these people are readily available to commit atrocities. This is what the police should be guiding against. The right, not affecting the right, the fundamental right of the of the people. Because with uh, I was on a platform yesterday with uh, the head to the to the governor on, on youth mobilization. They asked him, and I asked him, what are the measures the state government is putting in place to ensure, aside the educated youth you've spoken to, those who have the internet and all, what have you been doing? to get across to those guys under the bridge, to those guys who are vagrants, who have the who have no means of survival, who will take to crimes easily, even with a pack of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So this is what the government should be doing. The government should be reached out to them through grassroots mobilization and even community engagement. They should engage with CDCs, they should engage with CDAs just to reduce the, viol the, the chances of violence. But the fundamental rights of protesters should not be affected. That's why I said earlier that I think the only thing that is left for the IGP to do is just to ask protesters to come with, with shorties. Mm -hmm. IGP should know that we need to provide protection for Nigerians, and Nigerians are not obligated to get permission from him, from authorities. Because this present government used to be a street protesting about the chief in the land. It is another time for Nigerians to express their fundamental rights. However, in exercising, exercising this right, Nigerians should not be gullible. They should know why they are joining the protest. They should not say, okay, they should not, they should not, they should make it be like it is not politically motivated. Yeah. They should begin to ask themselves, what is doing this protest? Is it under motivated or politically motivated? Hmm. That is it. All right. I know that the IGP of police, you know, has 
said that um, why they want people to register and all of these guidelines is to ensure that they, um, you know, give the adequate personnel, they, they post people to those routes and they ensure public safety. But um, like I said, when we had the NSAS protest, we saw how everything turned out. So uh, how do you think people can actually ensure that they are safe even if they have to go out to protest. So how do you ensure your own safety? Because it's one thing for the police to, for the police to say, you know, we're going to protect you. We're going to ensure that this is as peaceful as possible. But in case of anything that could happen of, um, you know, with criminals having to hijack it, how can we ensure our own safety in all of this? Okay, the first thing is this. The government should deploy intelligence. Mm -hmm. Let's influence intelligence and let them also be among the protesters so that they would detect anyone who is carrying arms okay. very easily amongst the protesters that's number one that's why i came up with intelligence first so protesters on the other hand could also come up with uh, with uniform with uniform probably inscribed on their on their MB hashtag and bad governance and just with a uniform probably wear a particular color if they do not wear a particular color, just tag or and protesters that's okay if you are coming to social please make sure you are with a placard make sure you do not come with bottle uh, with a uh, bottle drink you could just come with all this uh, pet uh, something yeah the PET something but not not with uh, other ones that could be used to arm people. Mm. So these are some of the measures that protesters on their own should also put in place. And amongst themselves, not relying on traffic uh, officers, they should they could also engage in traffic control. Let them control traffic so that they will be free flow. In the process of exercising your rights, you do not tramp on another person's right. Do not block the road. Do not uh, block uh, access to public facilities. That is it. Hmm. So, so I know Hello? that, yes, can you hear me? I'm with you. So it was said that um, I think is the Nigerian, the students or so of the Lagos state are saying that they want to also have a solidarity walk on that day. And, you know, it begs the question, why now? Why is it the same day that is being scheduled for the end bad governance um, protest? And you're seeing other people spring up and say, you know, we're in support of the government. We're having like to do a solidarity walk for this. So how do we ensure that, you know, because there might just be some people that would come out that day and say, we are pro-government. We think the government is doing a great job. Um, you guys are the ones who are not paying patient just be a little bit more patient and things will get better and they're going to be the protesters who are saying no end bad governance the government isn't doing enough so how do we ensure that there is not going we don't have those clashes and then it doesn't just turn to something that we just never envisaged in it in the first place okay if uh, students are also organizing a work it is also their fundamental rights but students are logical enough they are educated they should not behave like like uh, like vagrants. They should not behave like hooligans. They should not behave like those other guys. That is what is expected of them. So they should not be unruly. They should also know that they are exercising their rights, and the other side are also exercising their right. However, when students say, "Okay, they are not joining the protest," and I I engage with other with some other people, and I ask them, "Are you sure?" It is not just the uh, the students union government executives that are assuring you that they are not joining the protests mm. because i'm sure that the people the government officials wouldn't meet with all the students on campus they would just meet with their reps who have a, a pecuniary interest maybe they are just there they are just saying what they want to say because of economic gains that are that are attached to it so that the that uh, students are saying they're not joining the protest, they are so organizing a work. Let us wait and see. Let us wait and see because how 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 have been, how has the this uh, this students union you know, government? How have they been executives? How have they been speaking for students on, on different campus in Lagos? This is the this is the thing. So, but it is also their right to embark on a war. They can also say they want to protest, but they are educated. They should organize themselves. They should not be like those guys who hijack protest. And if students are so organizing a walk, they should also ensure their safety and make sure they are not attacked. And please should ensure that 
These are students from the institution They should know that, okay, if they are students, who is they are students? Mm. That is the thing. Yeah, um, so if the IGP is saying, you know, you have to register, do you think it's also also going to ask them to register as well, even though it's a solidarity work they're saying that they want to do? So is, is this supposed to be a case of what is good for the goose is good for the gander? Because in a way, it's still, it's still a demonstration if you're going to look at it that way. Yeah, okay. The fact that uh, Nigerians are accepting to register does not mean it is legal. Right. The fact that parents are not saying anything about the registration does not mean we should criticize it and does not mean we should encourage it. I, in the first place, I do not, I, I do not uh, support registration in the first place. Mm. So it does not really need to ask them to register. There was a there was judgment given between uh, that, was, that was the litigation between the IGP. And uh, that's the IGP versus the ANPP or Nigeria's People's uh, Party. Mm. Where the the uh, Femi, but Femi Falano represented the, the ANPP then. And the court said this it's there. Nigerians could access it online. You do not need permission. You do not need any permission from them. You do not need to submit anything to them. You do not need to notify the police before you engage in a protest mm. so the police should not even tell the students to also submit their names right but, however because there is also another counter protest there's a counter protest students embarking on such protests should go out with their card with their uh, student uh, id cards mm. so that we know that okay truly these people are students do you understand so that is it Okay, so um, let's talk about the role of media because with all of this, I think it's important that the media covers it. But how do you think um, the media can do their best? And because if we're even talking about intelligence as well, and you know even data, um, how how can the media do a good job in covering this protest and ensuring that the whole world see what is going on? Uh, the media, the media will, will always be there to do the job. And uh, they also, an objective media, mm. an objective media wouldn't, uh, would, uh, would help down the tension. Mm. Like I, I was on platforms all through the weekend, on platforms all through the weekend, and the cause we got, the, the feelings of Nigerians, you would know that a lot of them are agitated. That is the fact. But we in the media, the media should down the tension. I say to people that, if you need to poison a nation, don't go too far. Only thing is just give uh, the media misinformation, poison the media. Mm -hmm. The media on their on the other hand should be objective and they should give out facts. I've listened to media organizations, some of them you, they just go online, go on, on Twitter, or that's X, they go on Facebook just to get their information and they begin to broadcast. Many of these things are not fact checked. I let me quickly re reference this. Media organizations and the media should not behave like untrained people who use the social media for financial gains. Because the more you get engaged, the more you have a, uh, have a compensation for it. So, you know, that uh, have been pushed uh, the oro something that they said uh, there is a there's yeah. an oro, oro masculine and legal. So when, when someone asked me, I said that, please, could you help us fact check this thing? I said, see, this thing, I do not need to fact check anything. Why? I was born because I've lived almost all my life in Lagos. And all through these those years, there has never been a day in, in the modern Lagos, so I don't know, maybe years, uh, hundreds of years ago, modern Lagos that I know, that the whole of Lagos, there will be restriction because there is an oral festival going on. I mean the whole of Lagos. So that should not be promoted in the first place. So this is the role of the media. The media should help stop misinformation. I've seen a lot of misinformation online. And media are also taking to it. They are also trying to... They should not even emphasize too much on it. They should just make sure uh, they do their fact-checking fact and uh, they, uh, they just let the people get the fact. I asked the SSA yesterday, I was with the SSA, I said, okay, this all or something, he said, there's nothing like that. 
Even before I got, I, I engaged with him, I knew there wouldn't be anything like that because in the modern in the history of modern Lagos, there has never been an Oro festival all through uh, a state with over the, the 20 million mm -hmm. people. No, yeah. fact check information, the objective, and in covering this. The journalists should also go with their means of identification so that they will be easily identified mm. by law enforcement protection. All right, finally, um, so from your own point of view, from your own standpoint, um, you know, how impactful do you think this protest is going to be? Do you think it will be effective enough? Um, do you think people will really be able to express themselves and the government will actually have no choice but to listen to them right now? Yeah, the thing is, we started seeing the impact of the of the protest mm. when the when the government when the people said they wanted to to protest when the people said they wanted to protest they approved the minimum wage right around this time a uh, few weeks ago we also had the, in, uh, the financial independence for judiciary palliative were disbursed to the state government mm. and I asked some people, I said, who are you protesting against? APC, Tinubu, political class, or bad governance? Nigerians should also try to be articulate in it. They have also in allocations to states, to different states of the federation. Nigerians should not just focus at the central government. All the councillors, all your chairs, chairmen, all them accountable. Let them account for the allocations they've got. Let them account for all those things. And there's also the Open uh, open Treasury uh, website. Nigerians should go there. A lot of Nigerians are not also informed. Open Treasury website, go online, type Open Treasury. You will see the monies spent by, by each of the ministries. They should also use the FOI Act, the Freedom of Information Act, to, to ask their, their, their leaders, their political leaders, even in inquiries, to account for how much they spent their, their resources. So that is it. But this protest will be in part because we have been seeing it. We have been we have seeing it. On the other hand, I need to also commend why we say the other side, we need to commend the the ID. If we are the former IGPs, the IGPs we've had in the past, when you say you want to protest, they just keep quiet, they do show of force, they do all sort of things and begin to, to mount their men mm. on roads, on critical infrastructure, waiting for protesters and to attack them. We also need to commend the IGP for speaking out logically and assuring the Nigerian people of its protection. Mm. Well, hopefully um, people would go out on that day if the protest is going to happen and hopefully it's going to be a peaceful because, protest. Yes. People will go out. People will go out to protect, to exercise their fundamental rights. Yeah, and we just hope that it will be peaceful. We hope that there would no, not be any loss of lives and properties. And, you know, we'll just express our voices. We'll express how we feel, and the government will listen to us. Um, Samson, I want to say thank you so much for coming. Thank you for sharing your valuable contributions on this topic. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're speaking to Samson Ajibade, he's a security expert, and we've just been looking at, uh, you know, several things regarding the protest. So the guidelines have been issued by the IGP of police, and we've been talking about the security concerns um, as we edge closer to the planned protest. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic that talks about the World Hepatitis Day 2024. Please stay with us. Is the next guest a live guest? Hmm? Okay.